Hello and welcome to the show. I'm David Dickinson and this is the real deal. I was hoping for red 50s. <laughs> well, we could just stretch to two red 50s, maybe. Someone is going to bring in something absolutely wonderful. Well, it's a belter, isn't it? It's as good as you see, really, you know? Yes. Are the dealers going to be shelling out big money today? Well, I hope so. Get it on your finger and get off home with it. He always costs me when he comes on. <laughs> he really, really does. That's his job, though. Look at the crowd. They're all smiling. They're all eager to do business. They want to do a bit of wheeling and dealing and buying and selling. And that's what this show is all about. The doors are open, orderly queues are formed, and our dealers are ready to splash some cash. And digging deep. Might be here for some time. Do you need any help? <laughs> no, no, I'm good. No, you're good. Are you going to really, really push me today? We'll see. I am Joe, you're, you're Trish. Pleased to meet you. First up, it looks like Trish has brought the contents of her jewellery box for Joe Brayshaw. Got bracelets. And bracelets. And bracelets. Jangly bracelets. Little bracelets. We've got bracelets. Thanks, Joe. I think we get the idea. I'm looking to get about £500. I'm going to be with Joe, and she's um, a bit scary, but I'll do my best to try and get what I want. Good luck. You buy them? How uh, did you come to them? The charm bracelet was from my father. He gave it to me when I was 21 with the first charm of 21 on there. That one there? Yes. And the others? Um, two I bought, and three were gifts. So you... Um... Don't wear them, they've just... I used to wear them. Um, the charm bracelet, I just don't get to go anywhere to wear it, really. They were very, very fashionable, weren't they? They were. And then they kind of went out of fashion. They and actually, I bit. think they're starting to get a b bit more. Are but, they? But they're still not... It's not great. No. Don't get carried away with it. It's not great. <laughs> it would be... It's a shame. I, maybe we're on the up again. We've got all sorts, of Yes, we? there's quite a mixture on there. Um, top hats and we've got a monkey is there some significance to him uh no i actually bought him myself because i thought he was quite nice he does look cute. and uh, the duck as well with a telephone <laughs> yeah so they're all relatively modern so i would guess dating from the 1970s up to present yes. day and um they're all nine carat Sadly, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Yes, it's old-fashioned and not worth anything. <laughs> well, it is worth something because of what it is. It is yeah. gold. Yeah. But it, the first part of what you said is correct. It's old-fashioned yeah. and, and, and a shame. So out come the dreaded scales and um, we'll just put the whole lot on. Which seems awful, I know. Can't argue with you, and it comes to 70. It can't make its mind up whether to be 73 or 74, but we've settled on. We'll say 74. 74 grams. I'm no Carol Vorderman, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but I think we're there. Um, 50, 100, 150, 200. 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500. There's a little start. OK. I was thinking just a little bit more. I mean, you love the monkey, don't you? I do like some of the charms, but they're just not easy. 550. How about a bit of advice from David? I'm feeling in the need of it. Well, I've just had a look at the estimations from our independent valuers, and it seems that the area is 480 to 550. I don't mess about. Well, I, I've noticed. <laughs> I, I just happen to notice that that whopping diamond ring that you're start, you've started to wear in, in recent years, that's how successful dealers that come on this show can be. <laughs> don't write in. <laughs> I'll, I'll just I say love it, it just, just Don't write in. OK, so it's not a bad offer. Now, you can try and get a little bit more off her. She's a bit of a sweetie, likes to play it a bit... Yeah, when I say no, I mean no. <laughs> That's what... When I say no, I mean no. But, but basically, she is a bit of a charmer. She's a very nice lady. You can try, but I think it's virtually on the money. 
Well, you've had the advice. Yes, I have. Now, I don't normally haggle or anything like that, but would you not just do five pounds? Well... <laughs> <laughs> and it's a deal. Five pounds. It's just so you feel like you've yes. got it. Bring it up to £555. Yes. And that's a deal. It is. Thank you very well much. Well done. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> I thought Jo might be a bit scary, but in actual fact, she's a very nice lady and I really enjoyed the deal. I think I'm getting soft in my old age. She didn't think I was scary. Well done, Trish. Across Hello, the den, Henry. Ian's also going the whole hog with Henry Nichols. I paid £70 for it and um, I'm looking to get at least 250 hopefully up to 400 I've got a very, very interesting bronze boar on my table next, but will it bring home the bacon? Let's see. Where did you find it? Is it in Heritage? Or... I uh, was travelling in uh, France with my wife and in the motorhome yep. and uh, we visited an antique fair Right. and um, I really liked it. So ended up buying it and we, we heard the programme was on today so we thought we'd try and bring something interesting Lovely. to do a deal. I mean, it's a nice thing. We've got a cast bronze boar and it's sitting on a nice marble base. It's a good subject, um, you know, and, and it's th these, these particular pieces are actually quite popular. I must admit, I do wonder how old it is. It's purporting to be 1920s, 1930s. The patination on the boar itself isn't quite what I would personally expect it to be if it was of that period. It's not quite dark enough. You know, you've got a lot of dust in there that looks like it's been there for a while, so maybe it is of the period. It's just something's telling me, in my own mind, as a dealer of many years, you know, with this, that it might not be quite you as You feel old it's as a copy it. rather than It that. could be, yeah, it could be, it could be. But nevertheless, it's a good subject. Um, there is, just on the side here, there's a little mark and it's just an H. It's almost like a foundry mark, right. um, not one I've seen before. No. Um, with some research, you could probably, you know, find out who the yeah. artist is. It's nicely cast. It, it is nicely done. The detail and definition's good. Um, it's, it's been much loved because everybody's gone like that with it. I it is. I don't feel that wear has been man-made, if you like. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the worst thing you can do in actual fact is polish bronzes because it does take off the yeah. patination. So, shall I get some money out? Yes, please. It is growing on me, I have to say. It's, it's definitely got something about it. It has. It's got it's got a tactile feel to it, yeah. which is nice. Good weight. Twenty, forty, fifty, sixty, eighty pounds. No, we're nowhere near. Nowhere near? No. Did it cost you a lot of money? Enough. Enough, yeah. right. So £80 could be a bit mean, then? Well, it, yes, I was, hope, <laughs> I was hoping for red 50s, put it that way. Oh, oh, really? OK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we could just stretch to two red 50s, maybe. Hmm, OK. £100. 120 it's Still a long way away. Yes, oh, yeah. Definitely, yeah. If I didn't like it, my feeling would be different, but I, I feel it's got something about it. Um, 140, Ian. No, I'm not going to take that, sorry. No. I think, you know, for me, I think that's where I want to be with it, 140. I mean, I think, you know, if I owned it and somebody turned around and said, do you want 160 for it, I would sell it. So, do you want to take it to auction? Yes, please. Ian, yeah. thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And just out of interest, how much did it cost you? I paid £70 for it. £70, pounds, well, that was a bargain, you know. And, and I think, you know, doubling your money would have been a good plan. It, it, <laughs> it would have been a good plan. It would have been. It would. I feel his offer was fair under the circumstances, but in my own mind, I feel that it's worth far more. I may live to regret that one. I hope for Ian's sake it flies in auction. For my sake, I hope it doesn't. <laughs> Sounds like sour grape to me, Henry. 180. Hopefully today's auctioneer Richard Winterton can save Ian's bacon. Good bronzes are always sought after. Uh, you get a good bronze, there's plenty of buyers out there. You set the reserve at 250. My only concern is, have you set the reserve just that little bit too punchy? Too, too high, maybe. Let me ask you this. If I see there is an offer with the auctioneer, 
Are you prepared to compromise or are you say no way, it's 250 or nothing? I can, I can go down to 200 for it. OK, well, I need to perhaps try and get the auctioneer's attention if and when this happens. It's coming up over there. Now we go to lot 43. It's the bronze figure there, the standing bore. Uh, we're in then, £100, I bid, 100 asking, 100 bid, 100 bid, 100, 100 bid, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 190, I'm bid at 190, 200, the internet now is at 200. And am I going to sell it now at 200? Yes. We're selling it then at £200. £200, be sold. 200. OK. At £200 on the internet, yep, a still a good return. Take away the commission. I make that £164. Uh, a nice return on your money. Very good. That looks like a bit more petrol, a bit more essence, uh, a bit more cheese, more bread, um, more camembert, more nights out in France, more excitement, more travelling. You know. Another, tr he, another trip coming another up. Another trip. On the day, real deal was here in the sale, sold on the internet. Don't tell me it's gone back to France again. Two hundred pounds. Take away the commission. One hundred and sixty-four pounds. Well done. And that was the real deal. What did you say about regrets, Henry? That really was the one that got away. But hey ho, can't win them all. Coming up, everyone's excited about this huge bars. Wow. Well, it's a belter, isn't it? I'm excited. But can Faye offer enough cash to own it? 450 that, Jeff. What do you think? No. How much more do you want for this, Jeff? Well, I'm looking near a thousand pound for it. <laughs> I don't. That's quite what I want. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Shrewsbury in Shropshire. The Real Deal treasures come in all shapes and sizes. Just look at this lot. This is enormous. I have got an absolute little sweetie. 200 quid. You've brought along today something that is absolutely fantastic, haven't yes, you? Yes, it is. It's beautiful. And Faye's found a very large vase that's left her almost speechless. Wow. A huge Clasoni vase. Very decorative, very pretty. <gasps> I'm excited. And Jeff's hoping it's worth big bucks. I bought it 60 years ago. I paid £100 for it, and I'm looking for over £600 for it today. I'm hoping you're going to be able to uh, tell me some information about it. Well, I've owned it for about 60 years. The last few years, it's been up in the attic. It's... Uh... Well, it's a shame yeah, for a piece is, like this is. to go in so the attic, isn't it? We thought to uh, bring it out and uh, sell it and buy something else. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you probably know all this, but it's a brass body. Yes. Brass wire work. That's right. And then it's like a cloisonne enamel mm -hmm. is applied to it. Glass, isn't it? It's ground powdered glass, glass yeah. powdered glass, and then it's applied to it. As a result, mm -hmm. you've got yeah, this right. fantastic finish. And I think it's Chinese. I think it's Chinese by the motives. Those are certainly Chinese motives. Because that is the pottery. Chinese motive for good luck, isn't That's it? That's right. I've had it on pottery, yes. And these I believe to be peaches. Yes. And the peaches are a symbol in, in China, or Chinese, for uh, longevity. And I believe these are bats. Yes, yeah. And, again, they represent longevity. Yeah. I've looked and looked for a signature because I, I think something of that quality you would hope to should find... have a, a signature, but I've looked and looked and I, I still can't find one. I mean, I'm, I'm just... Yeah. I, I, ooh, I don't know the age of it. What do you reckon, sort of...? Well, I think it's about 19... It's about 1910, I would think. I think originally it was in a, in a, a funeral shop window and I bought it out of auction. Oh, did you? Did you pay a lot of money for it? In those days, yes. You're going to tell me how much you paid no. for it? <laughs> a month's wages, for, at least, I paid for oh, it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Crikey, so you are talking yeah, a, yeah. a considerable amount of money, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Right. Let's put some money down. One hundred. Two hundred. 300. 
400. It's 450 there, Jeff. What do you think? No. Look at that face. No. <laughs> Look at me now. Go on. No, 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 I'm afraid. Nowhere near yet. I'm... Nowhere near? No, no, no. Do you know what I'm going to do here, Jeff? I'm yeah. going to ask David yes, for his I opinion. Think so. Is that OK? Yes. yes, that's lovely. Yes, let's have a thing. David, I need you again, I'm afraid. Well, I'm delighted to come in and have a look at this. Absolutely superb. If you can imagine the work that's gone into producing that vessel, the expertise and the firing of this is absolutely mind-boggling. It is... Well, it's a belter, isn't it? It's as good as you see, really, you know? Yes. Four to six is the estimate of my experts. I'm going to stick my neck out and say, I don't rate that four to six. I think it's worth more than that. I think the sheer quality tells you it is superb craftsmanship. I'm going to say you'll be doing yourself a disservice unless you send that to the auctioneer. That's what I do. Oh, thank you, David. Do you know what? I wish I hadn't asked him to come in now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Well, it's just true what he says, though, isn't it? It's just quality, quality, quality. It is quality, quality, quality. Yeah. Come on, then, let's have a look what we can do. So I've got 450 down on the table. Right. That's 500. There's 550 there. That is where I would like to be. No, dear. Pray not. I wouldn't want much more than that for it. I'm going to do this. There's six hundred pounds on the table. Um, I think I am going to auction. How much more do you want for this, Jeff? Well, I'm looking time? near a thousand pounds for it. I don't. That's <laughs> quite what I want. I think. It, I think it, it's just the quality. I think that's a very, very good offer, actually. But it's not quite good enough for what I want today. <sighs> yes. Reluctantly, I'll shake your hand. But thank you for bringing it along. Oh, and I know what I'm going to ask you. How much did you pay for it? Between you and I, yeah. a hundred pounds. I can't believe it. And you've just turned down my six hundred pounds. Yeah. That was a month's salary when I bought it. Well, I hope you do really well with it. I really do. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you, you for bringing it along. Well. Thank you. I had in the back of my mind that I wanted a thousand pounds for it, and David made up my mind when he said about the quality of it. And it, it'll, it's a gamble I'm, I'm willing to take. I think I had a lucky escape there. I think Jeff's going to get stuck with that barge, you know. Unfortunately for Jeff, over at the sale room, auctioneer Richard thinks Faye might be right. Faye offered a cracking £600. Are we going to get up there and past it? <laughs> I'm not sure. Jeff can't make it to the sale room, so the Duke's got his fingers crossed. The only thing that worries me about this gamble is he set the reserve at £400. He could come well unstuck here. If it doesn't make over the 600, he's going to be losing because at 400 or anywhere around that, take away the commission, it's a lot less than the 600 that he was offered. Gambling territory, Jeff. I wish you luck. Let's see what happens. The large uh, Chinese Lasoni vase there. Uh, bids in at 300, 300 bid, 300 I'm bid, 300, 300, 300, 320, 340, 340, 360, 340, 360, 360, 380, 380, at 300, turn down 600, bad mistake, at 380 I'm bid at 380, it's a great lot, no telephone bids, no Chinese bids, no bids on the book, 380, no bid, not sold. So, it didn't sell, it didn't make the reserve of 400. Jeff, you made the wrong decision. The real deal was with Faye. Oh, Jeff, you could have walked away with £500 profit if you'd only taken Faye's cash. I knew I'd got that one right. You certainly did. Rosie. Back in the den, and rather than filling up her purse, Rosie's brought hers to sell. I'm looking for around about £50, which will go towards holiday funds. This is classic 1920s accessory. I hope I'm going to be able to bag it. Ah, that was my line. Tell me what you know about this bag. I, I found it amongst some other belongings that was at my mother's house after my father died, because she died first. And, um, put it in a shoebox with a load of other things of hers. And right. it's been there ever since. OK. I think it's, it's a 1920s bag, right. almost certainly. 
It's the sort of thing that young girls would have taken to a dance class and they would have had a few little tiny odds and ends in it, nothing much, just because of the size, it's, it's a little That's clutch not. bag. Now, it's made of steel mesh and I would think at one point in its lifetime it would have been lined with silk. Oh. But it's hardly surprising now that over the years the silk has probably deteriorated and been pulled out. I mean, it, they, it does literally decompose into little tiny bits. Right. And it's been framed all the way around in a silver mount. This, this, the clutch part is silver. Right. And the chain links are silver. And every single link, if I look with my eyeglass, every single link is marked 925. Now, 925 is the silver mark. Rather than it being continental silver, to me, it's probably more likely to be American of that period. OK. Um, it's only that the 925 is often used as an American hallmark. Now, in the centre at the front is a cut steel oval cabochon which has been enamelled. This enamelling, which is effectively glass as a coating, has been damaged yes. and chipped. And this enamel work is very difficult to repair. It's possible, but it's very expensive and a very tricky process. Right. Now, I don't know what you're expecting to get for it, but I think I'll stop now and start putting some money okay. down on the table. Okay. 20. 30 pounds for your little bag. That's, that's a fair offer, but um, I'll see how far you're going to go. It won't be an awful lot more, Rosie. Oh, changing colour now. Changing colour, ominous sign. £35 for your little bag. I think it's just a little low. I know there's damage, I understand what you said. OK. I'm going to put this in replacement that. So we're now at 40. Any chance of seeing the green one again? So if I put another five down, would you shake my hand? Yes, I think I would. Okay. I just... I'm not going to lose out on a fiver. So £45, Rosie, we've got a deal? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to go to a good home and it's not going to be shut in a box and it will be seized. So I am happy with what I've got. Oh, I really got squeezed on that bag. Um, I paid five pounds more than my top guesstimate, but we'll see how it goes. Don't you mean if it goes? Coming up, Curious Comics. The editors were given quite a hefty prison sentence, believe it or not, because of the obscene nature of its content. Oh, and dirty dancing. <laughs> T-shirt. <laughs> and master letters. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Shrewsbury. Now, we all know our dealers love a bit of bling. What woman doesn't like a bit of gold? Oh, I love it when I get gold on the table. And a few diamonds. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. I haven't met her yet. Ooh. Nice to meet you, Hazel. Nice to meet you, Joe. So Hazel should find this bracelet an easy sale. I would like about £70. She's very tough. So I don't think um, it'll be a walkover, but I'll do my best. Oh, I think we'll buy this one. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And will you be digging deep? That's for me to know and for you to find out. Have you had your little bangle long? I've had my little bangle about 20 years, given to me by my mother-in-law, Mark II. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Oh, sure, you? lots Good. of people don't. <laughs> so why, 20 years later, have you decided not to love the little bangle anymore? I wore it for quite a while, uh, but I don't wear it anymore. 
I think she would approve if I sold it and put it towards buying something I will wear. Right. I'll just have a little look. We've got a nice little Victorian bangle, a few little diamonds and rubies, some nice applied decoration. Got a nice set of hallmarks. Chester, nine carat, 375. It's probably from about 1900 and 1910, that sort of area. The decoration around this top side, and we've got three nice crisp looking rubies with two tiny, tiny diamond chips in between, and all of this ball decoration, which was very popular in the late Victorians. Um, nice and clean. Jobs are good. Good. Right. Dosh out. See what you can do. And let's make a start with a £50 note. Nice. Nice. Uh, nice. £70. Mm. Nice. 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 We're getting there. We're getting warm. Uh, £80. I'm doing all the colours of the notes. You are. Yeah. You are. £80. You want to have a word with the boy, the big lad? Mm. What do you reckon, oh, Rosemary? Boston, Rosemary. It's a little bit more, I think. A little bit more. Mm. A little bit more. I've gone boss. off. I've gone off, Rosemary. Yes. Rapidly. <laughs> Most somehow. people do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was uncalled for, wasn't it? <laughs> right. Um, Sorry. So, Hazel, do you think a bit of advice might be? Uh, it would indeed. Yeah. Hello. The jewellery experts on the podium behind me tell me 60 to 100 pounds. This is the style of bracelet they like to wear in Newcastle. Is it? Apparently so. Friday evening. <laughs> T-shirt. And master letters. Don't write in. I like Newcastle. <laughs> OK, uh, so, a decent price on the table. Yes. She might just give you a little bit more if you ask her nicely. She's very nice, very charming. So hasn't she might gone away yet. It hasn't gone away yet. No. But you're in the ballpark, let's put it that way. So I'll leave Thank it you. with you. Thank I you very much. I think you don't need me. Thank you. Right. Hmm. Um, can we have the next colour, do you think? So you now have £85 on the table, Hazel? What do we think? I think we have a deal. Excellent. Thank you very much. I came in hoping for 70. I've got 85. Perfect. I told you I was going to buy it. Yeah, but you paid £15 more than Hazel wanted. Janine, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Next up, Janine's looking to sell a marvellous collection. I'm selling some comics today on behalf of my partner and he's looking at about 100 to 150 pounds. A lifetime's collection of magazines and comics. Mm, I don't know what I'm going to offer on these. Well, you better think quick. You've brought a rather large number of comics by the looks of things. Are they your collection? They're my partner's and um, they belong to his late brother. Right. So I'm selling them on behalf of him. Right. And there are a lot more than we're seeing here on the table, aren't there? It's, it's around know, 200. 200 in, in the collection. And they, they haven't any sentimental value to your other half? Not well. They're in a box and they're just stuck in a room when his brother would have rather someone who appreciated them had them. Right. I'm drawn to this one, the Angry Oz, because this magazine... Uh, started in Australia in 1963 um, and then it came to Britain in 67 and the editors were subject to an Old Bailey trial for obscenity Ooh. Ooh. and they were found guilty um, and they were given quite a hefty prison sentence, believe it or not, because of the obscene nature of its content. Therefore, I'm not going to open up the magazine. And so I think this has a real scarcity and an interest about it that perhaps some of the others don't, but different fields. Yeah. The other magazines generally we're in the, we're the 70s, aren't we? Yes. And of course, Marvel is loved by teenage boys and girls, I gather. Um, as rather like stamp collecting, there can be one 
just one magazine in a, in a collection that can reach ridiculous sums of money, but you've got to go through them and then you also look at things like how well they've been looked after. The Angry Oz, for example, it's got issues here and, and it's these little things that dealers in ephemera will look at and they want perfect to sell to the collectors of perfect. It looks as though he's thoroughly enjoyed looking through it. <laughs> Do you know what you want to get for them? I've got an idea. You've got an idea in your mind. £20 for your magazines. It's a very definite no. £40? No. Definitely not. £50. And I am actually feeling a bit nervous, David. Well... Again, you either know this material or you're miles away. I look at it and I haven't got a clue. We've got a 60 to 80, we've got an 80 to 120. Yeah. I'm going to say, go to the auction. Yeah. You're likely to find, through the internet, there are collectors of these mags. They seem to be in quite good order, mm. which is important. Mm. So, um, I think, generally speaking, it is an auction lot. Right. And there you will find a buyer. Thank you. Janine, I think that was really sound advice, and I am not putting any more down on the table. So, what's your decision going to be? I'm going to go to auction. You're going to, I don't blame you. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. I was a bit shocked about what was in the Oz magazine. Um, I wish I'd looked at it earlier now, because it's been in the dining room for six months. Any regrets, Debbie? There could always be one little gem in there that I've not seen and it could be worth a lot more money. We'll find out if you're right in a few minutes. Earlier, Janine took David's advice and opted to take her late brother-in-law's collection of comics to auction. I think we'll do better than the £50 that Debbie offered us today. As long as it's around £100, then I'll be happy. Well, our auctioneer Richard thinks you might be in luck. With the amount of interest we've had on these magazines, I am confident we're going to get these sold. They're here with a reserve of £100. That might be a bit too bullish. If we get near to the 100 do you want to accept a lesser offer? You don't have to do, but if you tell me in advance, I'll be able to signal to the auctioneer should that occasion happen, so... Yeah, we're looking at buying him a plaque for the crematorium and they're around 100 but we would accept a little bit less. OK, well, let's see how we go. Moving to 187, quantity of the vintage comics now. Could Marvel Thor, the Avengers, Rolling Stones there, lot 187. Bids are on the book now. At £50, I'm bid. Straight in at 50. At £50, I'm bid 60, 70, 80, 90, 110. Sounding good. Sounding good. 120 in the room. At 120. 120 to you, sir, 120. Sold 120. I'm pleased about that. £120. We have obviously the commission to take away. I make that 98 quid. Oh, that's fun. So 98 quid coming back. We know what you're going to use it for, uh, for a plaque of the, uh, at the crematorium for this dear person. So I'm sure you're happy on the yeah. day, uh, if I dare say that, but you're happy and satisfied is the word. Yeah. So on the day, we came up trumps here. Um, you turned down 50 pounds from Debbie, 120 under the gavel, taking home 98 pounds for a very, very good cause and that was the real deal. My partner and his family are going to be absolutely chuffed to bits about that so we can get the ball rolling for the plaque. Well done, Janine, and what a fantastic tribute to your brother-in-law. Still to come. We've saved the best till last and Faye's excited again. Oh, wait till you see what I've got coming up now. Diamonds, platinum, art deco. It is fantastic. So, will Faye get what she wants this time? Look at the sparkle in her eyes. Look at the She's... sparkle of the ring. <laughs> I know that. Don't make the mistake of being too mean on this one. Have you ever fancied coming on Dickinson's Real Deal? It's so very, very simple. All you do is log on to itv.com forward slash be on TV, look for Dickinson's Real Deal, then find out when we're in your area and you just turn up on the day. It's as simple as that, and I will look forward to meeting you. 
And that's exactly what our final seller, Rachel's done. And she's come along with an absolute stunner. Today I've brought in a beautiful platinum and diamond ring. I inherited it off my grandmother. Wow, I love this ring. It's beautiful. I really want it. I think it's going to cost me. I would like to hopefully get around £600 or more to start a trust fund for my children. What can you tell me about it? It was originally my nana's. It was her second engagement ring because my granddad felt that bad that her first one broke. OK. So we went out and bought this beautiful ring. All I know is it's platinum and diamond. Mm -hmm. That's about as much as I know. OK. I recently inherited it off my mother. She passed away this year. And we're looking to sell it, really, because it doesn't fit me. And my last words off my mum was that she wanted the money to go to my children so we could start a trust fund for them. Oh, bless. So... And it doesn't fit you? No, it's too big. Oh, my goodness. It's far too big, and I would have always wanted to wear it, but it's just too big. It doesn't fit any finger. It's beautiful. It really is gorgeous. The diamonds are a lovely colour. They sparkle beautifully. We've got two round brilliants in the centre and one on either side, and we have two rather nice baguette diamonds. Um, when they cut diamonds in the baguette, with this shape here, um, because it has a large table to the stone, the diamonds tend to be of a much nicer quality mm. um, because otherwise the dark bits inside the stones can be seen. So they're obviously nice quality diamonds. The metal it's set in is platinum, you say? Yes, it says in it. Yeah, I think there is a mark here. If I just take my eyeglass out and I can just have a look. Yes, it's stamped plat, which is short for platinum. There's no hallmark within the ring, uh, which would have been quite, quite nice to see yeah. because then we could have identified the maker uh, and given it an exact age. But this is going to be somewhere between 1920, 1930. Yeah. Um, that ties in with Platinum became fashionable yeah. then. Um, and it fits. I love it. So do I. <laughs> right. I'll pop that back down there. I'm going to put some money on the table okay. and I really would like to buy it, OK? £100. £200. £300. £400. £500. I would like a little bit more, please, as it is for my children. Oh, you're pulling on those heartstrings, Rachel. I'm sure we can go a little bit higher. Not messing about. I really want it. I thought I'd start there, but we'll have to see where I go next. I don't know. Well, we'll find out in a minute. Back to Rachel's gorgeous Art Deco ring. Surely Faye won't let this one slip through her grasp. £600. A little bit more, as it was my Oh, lunch. here he comes. Now, I've looked at this ring. I think it is fabulous. Now, I saw Faye trying it on. <laughs> it looks wonderful on Faye. Mm, I would bet my bottom dollar it's never going to see the front of a shop. I think it's going to go onto her finger. The estimation is six to eight hundred pounds. Uh, I'm going to leave this with you. Don't make the mistake of being too mean on this one. Put a bit of money down, get it bought, get it on your finger. Look at the sparkle in her eyes. Look at the she's... sparkle of the ring. I know <laughs> that. Well, you're absolutely yeah. right, but she's... she's... <laughs> the eyes are okay. jumping up. OK, get it bought. You... It's the nicest thing I've seen for a long time. Thank you. Oh, my goodness me. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Well, I do have children, two of. Two so it have to be... Sp an equal-ish number, because it's difficult to... I've got to give them both the same, haven't I? 20... 30... 40... 640 pounds. Can we make it a tiny bit more? I say it is for a trust fund. You know, you try and teach these dealers something, they love it, they want it. If you'd have put £700 down, <laughs> you probably would have 
bought it by now. Um, and it's not worth losing a pretty Art Deco ring like that for just a few bob. Get the 50 quid down, get it on your finger and get off home with it. He always costs me when he comes on. He really, <laughs> really does. That's his job, though. <sighs> £700. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can I put it on now, Yes, please? you can, of course Thank you can. You. Enjoy wearing it. I love that. I managed to get £100 more than I was expecting, so it's a great start to the Children's Trust Fund. Thank you very much, Faye, and I hope you enjoy wearing the ring. Really excited. I love that ring. Really love it. For now, it's staying on my finger. And that's where it still is. After getting the ring home, Faye couldn't bear to part with it, so no profit for her today. But did her fellow dealers do any better? So, do you want to take it to auction? Yes, please. Well, Henry made a pig's ear of it. I may live to regret that one. Didn't you just? 200. £45, Rosie, we've got a deal. Yeah. Debbie only just managed to back herself a deal. I paid £5 more than my top guesstimate. And she might be regretting that now, too. I did get squeezed for every last penny, so I'm not surprised I'm still its proud owner. That's three dealers and no profit. <laughs> Can Joe Brayshaw save their day? There was definitely a theme to her day. Got bracelets and bracelets and bracelets, jangly bracelets, little bracelets. We've got bracelets. And she had to compete with Hazel's secret weapon. What do you reckon, oh, Rosemary? A little bit more, I think. I've gone off Rosemary. But there was still room for a profit. Thumbs up. And she thought she was losing it with Trisha's collection. Now, I don't normally haggle, but would you not just do five pounds? She's going to feel better <laughs> about it. We're going to have a deal. There's Thank your £5 deal. You. Well, I think I'm getting soft in my old age. Hardly. £80 profit is good in anyone's book. Thank you, Joe. But it was our sellers who went home happiest today. Oh. I am happy with what I've got. Thank you very much. Now, that's the real deal. I think they did fantastic, our sellers today. They outpaced our dealers. That's what I want to see every time. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.